Hey everyone, and welcome again to another math lesson with Mr. Walker. Thank you for logging in and joining me. Today we're going to be doing some problem solving with some word problems. Alright, but as we've seen so far in the other lessons that we've done, that word problems really aren't something that we have to be afraid of, right? There are some strategies and, and tips and skills that we can use to help us uh, break down word problems and figure them out and solve them with relative ease now. And we're getting pretty good at this. So today I just wanted to take some time to review some of those skills with you, take a look at some multi-step kind of problems again, and basically just work with you to kind of hone our skills a little bit and, and become real problem solvers when it comes to math, because I know you guys can do it. You got the smarts for it. So let's keep building that le knowledge and let's, uh, let's just get better at being problem solvers. So we're going to jump right in and take a look at this problem here, which I have on the board. So I'm going to encourage you guys to read it out loud to yourself or to your learning guide or to somebody who's in the house with you or wherever you're at. Read it out loud and then we'll read it again together. So go ahead and take a look and start to get your brain thinking about what you might do for the, to solve this problem. All right, so let's read it together real quick. It says a company has three locations with 70,010 employees altogether. The first location has 34,857 employees, and the second location has 17,595 employees. How many employees work at the third location? And use a tape diagram to show your work. So we've learned some skills like using that tape diagram, really kind of drawing out our problem, drawing out the different parts to our problem, and breaking it down so we can see what's going on, right? So I'm going to start us off here just to kind of dissect the problem a little bit and look at the different parts and look at what it's asking us to do. So first of all, the actual like question that is asking us is how many employees work at the third location? So that's what it wants us to find out. All right. And if I look through here, I don't see a number for third location anywhere. So that's not something they give us. So that's what we're going to be finding. But it does give us that there's 7, 000, or 70, 000, 10 employees all together. Okay, so that's all together, all of them, right? The first location has 34,857, and the second has 17,595. So we have some things that we can work with here. Definitely enough for us to start diagramming it out and drawing that tape diagram so we could see what we're working with. So what I want you guys to do is just take a minute and draw something. Even if you're not 100% sure of what to do, start sketching something out. You know how to draw a tape diagram, so put in some of the numbers that we have and draw them in that tape diagram, start to think about how they would relate to one another, and just kind of start sketching something else, okay? What could you draw? What might it look like? Even if, like I said, if you can't get the final answer right now, that's okay. Just start to sketch something out and get some ideas on what you might do to solve this problem. So go ahead and start that. I'm going to start mine, and then we'll come back together, and we'll, we'll take a look at it. All right, so the way I would start to sketch this out, and again, yours might look a little bit different than mine, but that's okay as long as we're both getting to the same place. But right off the bat, I'm kind of thinking, okay, well, this company has three locations, right? So they have one location. So I'm going to draw a rectangle for that. I'm going to draw the second location over here. And we'll draw the third guy in right about here. So I got like a southern accent though, there for a second. We're going we're gonna to draw all this here location. All right, so we have my three locations, right? And I know the first location, according to the problem here, the facts that I could take right from the problem, the first location has 34,857 employees. So 34,857 employees. Okay, cool. So we know the first location. We also know the second location, right? The second location has 17,595. So if this is my second location here, I'll draw that in as 17,595. Perfect. Okay, so I have my first location. I'm going to go ahead and label this so I don't forget. First location, I'm just going to abbreviate it there. And we have our second location. And then the third location. But we don't know what the third location is, right? We don't know how many employees that has because it doesn't tell us in here. That's what we're actually going to have to find out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to label this as like C because I don't know what it is yet. So we'll just say like the third place, this is C. This is what we're looking for, okay? We do know, however, that there are 70,010 employees in total. So if I drew like a big bracket here, I would know that in total these three locations would add up to 70,010. 
70,000, 10. Okay, cool. So I got my three locations, got the first two as numbers, I got the third one that I'm not sure what it is yet. So knowing that, take a look at your tape diagram, see if you have something similar or how it like relates. Maybe it's a little bit different, that's okay too. Um, as long as you have those numbers in there and it's kind of explaining the same thing, right? So based on this, how could we problem solve? What could we do to find out what location C is? All right, so I heard some good thinking out here, but here's what I would do, okay? I would take this first location and this second location, right? And I would add them up to figure out what these, uh, basically these two pieces are together here, right? And if I figured out what those piece, two pieces are together here, then I could subtract that from the total to figure out what this third piece is here, okay? So my first step is going to be to add up these two numbers here my 34,857 and my 17,595. Those two numbers I'm gonna add up to figure out what this total piece would be right here. So let's bring this over here. So I have my two numbers here, my 34,000 and my 17,000. I'm gonna add them up, right? So seven and five would give me 12. I would put my two ones down here and bring over those additional 10 ones as a 10. Then I have five plus nine plus one, so nine and one is 10 and five more is 15. So I would put the five tens down here. I would carry my additional 10 tens as 100. So then we have eight and five is 13 plus one more is 14. I'm gonna put the four down there, carry my additional 10 hundreds as another thousand. It would have four plus seven plus one, so I'm gonna think of that as eight plus four, which is 12, carry my additional 10 thousands as one 10 thousand. Three plus one is four, plus one more is five. So that tells me that this piece, these two locations combined, the first and second location, are going to amount to 52,452 employees. Awesome, right? So that gives me a good start, but I still have to find C. So if I take my total number of employees and I subtract the first two locations, the number of employees at the first two locations, that should give me what's left should be C, what's left at location number three. So I'm going to take my 70,000, 10, and I'm going to subtract 52,452 from that. So what I want you guys to do, I want you to try this out on your own first. Yes, we're subtracting across some zeros. Yes, we're going to have to do some unbundling, but I know you guys can do it. So give it a try first on your own. Let me know what your answer is, and then we'll come back together and we'll, we'll try it together after that. Okay? All right. So to subtract these, I got to start in my ones, start all the way on the right. And if I look at my ones, I can't take two away from nothing, right? So I'm going to have to look and maybe unbundle from my tens place. So I'm going to take one of these tens, so which means this guy will turn into a zero. But those, but that 10, I'm going to turn into 10 ones and add it to my zero. So that would be 10. Okay. So now I could subtract 10 minus two will give me eight. So then I can move to my tens place and zero minus five is, oh man, I can't do that either. Okay. So let me look to the next one. Another zero. That's no good. Keep going. Another zero. This ain't looking good. Got to go all the way here to my seven, right? So I'm going to borrow 10,000 and I'm going to turn it into 10 thousands, which will give me a 10 here, right? 10 thousands. But then I'm going to have to borrow one of those 10 thousands and turn it into 10 hundreds to make this guy a 10. And then I'm going to have to borrow one of those 10 hundreds, turn it into a nine and bring those ten, that 10 hundred into 10 tens, which will make this a 10, and then I think we'll be good to go, because we don't have to borrow any more from here. So 10 minus five will give me five. Nine minus four will give me five as well. Nine minus two will give me seven, and six minus five will give me one. So here we go, 17,558, that should be what's left over as far as employees are concerned and that should be the number of employees that work at location three. So hopefully you got the same answer and you followed very similar steps to get there. Um, 
my caution to you as always is make sure you're doing your math right. Sometimes this takes so long that you try to rush through the math and you miss something even though I know you know how to add and subtract. So make sure you're taking your time to not only draw out your tape diagram, but also taking your time to add and subtract. I know it seems easy, but I see a lot of silly mistakes made there. So make sure you take your time. All right, that was a good first one. That was a lot of steps there. Let's try another one out and see how we do. All right, I like this problem because it works in some uh, data and some tables as well. So that makes me happy because I like to work with data and numbers and tables. It's fun stuff. So go ahead and read this problem to yourself first, and then uh, we'll read it together once after that, and then we'll kind of dissect it and break it down from there. So go ahead and read it out loud, and when you're done, click continue. All right, cool. So it says, Owen's goal is to have 1 million people visit his new website within the first four months of it being launched. That's a pretty lofty goal. He must have a really exciting website. Um, below is a chart showing the number of visitors each month. How many more visitors does he need in month four to reach his goal? I should say his goal. I don't know why it says his goal, but that's okay. And then it says, use a tape diagram to show your work. So looking at this uh, graph down here, this, I'm sorry, this table down here, we have the month, month one, month two, month three, and month four, and we have how many visitors for each month. So in month one, he got 228,211 visitors. In month two, he got 301,856 visitors. And in month three, he got 299,554 visitors. So we want to know, how many does he need in month four in order to make his million people visited, right? Uh, big goal to have, but good for him for getting this much traffic to his site already. That's awesome. All right. So using a tape diagram, how can we diagram this out? How can we draw this um, to represent or to figure out what we need to do in order to solve for month four? What do you think we need to do? Go ahead and take a minute and draw your tape diagram, and then we'll compare what we have in a second. All right, well, to solve this problem, we know that he wants to have 1 million people visit, right? So I'm going to draw a big bracket here. And I'm going to write 1 million. Because we know that's his total goal. That's how many people he wants to visit his site. And so far, he has, let's see. 228. 211,000. He has 301,856. Sorry, my numbers are getting a little cramped in there, but I want to leave space for other problem solving stuff. All right. He also has 2,099. I'm sorry. He also has 299,554. And then month four. We don't know what that is yet, so we're going to call this um, M for month, and this is what we're going to be figuring out, right? What's that last month need to be in order for us to get to 1 million? And if you wanted to call it V for visitors or P for people or W for website, like whatever is fine. Any letter you want to use, it's fine. It just kind of reminds you of what it is that you're trying to, uh, to solve, right, to find. All right, so this is what we know. This kind of helps us set up our problem, right? So I know that if I take this whole part here, right? These three um, numbers of visitors from the different months. If I take these and add them up, whatever total I get, if I subtract that, that will give me whatever's left over will give me what he needs for that fourth month. Okay. So that's how I could set up my problem. But I'm going to do one thing here that we haven't done in some of the other ones. And I'm going to, to estimate, um, I'm going to round some numbers, which I know we've done before, but we haven't done it when problem with problem solving. And the reason I'm going to do that is I want to get somewhere close to make sure when I'm doing my math, if I go through the trouble of adding and subtracting all these numbers, I want to make sure that I'm close to where I'm getting to make sure that I don't make a mistake, right? So if we estimate first, it's going to give us an idea of where we should get to. So when I'm adding and subtracting and doing all the other stuff, if I'm not anywhere close to that, I might go, okay, maybe I made a mistake somewhere. Let me go back and check my math. That's how estimation can help us, right? So I'm going to look at each one of these months and I'm going to round them. And I think to make it easy myself, I'm just going to round it to the greatest place value this time, the largest place value. So for example, this guy would round to 200,000. Okay. This guy would round to 300,000. And this one would round to 300,000 as well. So if I added up 200,000 plus 300,000 plus 300,000, that would give me, well, let's see, 3 and 3 is 6, plus 2 more is 8. So that would give me a total of 800,000. 
which means he needs about 200,000 more visitors to reach his goal of 1 million, okay? And these are both estimations. They're approximate, okay? So I'm not saying this is what he needs, but I'm saying when I'm adding up my numbers, when I find out my total for this month here, what's left over, it should be pretty close to this 200,000, okay? It's not going to be exact, but it should be close. If I'm getting something that's closer to 400,000, then I know I might have done my math wrong. If I'm doing something closer to 100,000 or less than 100,000, then I'm going to need to get going to need to go back and check my work because I probably messed something up somewhere. So this just kind of helps keep me on track of where I need to go. Okay, that's, that's why estimation is helpful in this sense. So I know the first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to add up these three numbers and get a total, right? We don't know what that is, but we need to find that total. And then I'm going to take that total and I'm going to subtract it from the million visitors because that's what he wants to find. So that'll give me what's left over, okay? So why don't you vertically set up a problem where you can add these three numbers, the 228,000, 301,000, 856, and 299,000. Go ahead and add up those three numbers and let's see what we get. All right, so if I add up these three numbers here, I stacked them vertically, I lined up my place value, I make sure I'm good to go, and I'm going to start from right to left to add, right? So I'm going to do 6 plus 2, which is 8, plus 1 more, which is 9. I'm going to do 1 and 5 is 6, plus 4 is 10, so I'm going to put my 10 here, or my 0 here for the tens place, and I'm going to group those 10 tens into 100, so I'll label my 100 right here. So 8 and 2 is 10 plus 5 is 15, plus 1 more is 16, so I'm going to put my 600s here, and I'm going to group the 10 other 100s into 1,000. So 8 and 1 is 9, plus 9 more is 18, plus 1 more is 19. Same thing, and I'm going to put my 9, I'm going to bundle the 10 other 1,000s into 1 10,000. So 2 and 9 is 11, plus 1 more is 12. Doing the same thing here, rebundling. Two and three is five. Two more is seven, and one more is eight. So eight hundred twenty-nine thousand six hundred and nine. All right, perfect. So we know now what this is. So eight hundred and twenty-nine thousand six hundred and nine would be this whole piece right here. Okay, these guys all right here. And if we look back at our estimation, that's pretty close to what we estimated, right? 800,000. So now we need to take that 829,609 and do what with it? Exactly. We need to subtract that from our 1 million. And that will tell us what's left over, what he needs in order to get to the 1 million. So I'm going to take my 1 million and I'm going to take my 829,000, making sure I line up my place values and my periods and my commas and all that stuff. I'm going to align them vertically, and I am going to subtract. Now, looking at this right now, I'm going to be subtracting across some zeros, right? Because I got all zeros in that top number. So I'm going to have to definitely do some unbundling to be able to regroup my place values there. So I want you guys to try that out on your own first and get ready to subtract by regrouping or unbundling across those numbers, and then we'll come back and compare, okay? So what I had to do is I started in my millions place here, and I took that one million and I unbundled it into ten hundred thousands. Okay, so that gave me, instead of zero, that gave me ten hundred thousands. So then I took one of those hundred thousands, leaving me with nine hundred thousands. I took one of those hundred thousands and unbundled it into ten ten thousands. So I had ten ten thousands, but then I had to, to keep going. I had to borrow one of these, or I had to unbundle one of these ten ten thousands. So now I have nine ten thousands. And I unbundled one of them into a thousand, actually into ten thousands. So I took those ten thousands, I borrowed or unbundled one of those, so now I only had nine thousands left. And I took one of those nine thousands and turned it into ten hundreds. So I had ten hundreds, I borrowed one of those hundreds, turned it into ten tens, borrowed one of those tens, and turned it into ten ones. So now I made it all the way through and I have enough that I could subtract. Um, from all of these. There's no, my bottom number doesn't have any greater place values than the ones in my top. So I'm good to go now. So now I can do 10 
I subtract 9 from that will give me 1. 9, take away 0, will give me 9. 9 minus 6 will give me 5. Go ahead and put my comma in. 9 minus 9 will give me 0. 9 minus 2 will give me 7. 9 minus 8 will give me 1. And then I don't have a millions place left anymore. So, oh, I made a mistake in my subtraction. Goodness gracious, 9 minus 6 is not 5. Come on, Mr. Walker, you know that. 9 minus 6 is 3. Next time you got to yell a little louder at your computer to let me know I made a mistake. But see, even me, we set up the problem correct, we followed all the right steps, we made some estimates, and I still made a silly mistake in my math. So that's why it, it pays to go slow and pay attention as you're solving your problems, because even me, a, a, an accomplished mathematician such as myself, can make silly mistakes like that. So our number is... 170,391. That is going to be our missing piece for month four. That's how many more viewers he needs to get to his website in order to make that million viewer mark, which based on what he's done over the other months, I think he'll be good. I think he'll get it. Also, if we look at our original estimate here of 200,000, well, if we were to round this number up to the 100 thousands place, we'd get 200,000. So our estimate wasn't too far off. So we know that we must have done our math right because we're close to what we estimated to d estimated it to be in the first place. Easy for me to say, right? All right, so that's just some problem solving, right? You're going to be doing some more of this problem solving on your own and practicing this a little bit more um, throughout this lesson and throughout lessons all, all year long. Um, it's important to have these skills and definitely take your time and map things out and think about what you're doing before you do it. You'll just jump in and say, oh, maybe I need to add these numbers and maybe I need to subtract these. Slow down. Take your time. You know this stuff. You know how to do it. You know how to problem solve. So definitely do that. Don't get weirded out. Don't get afraid when you see a word problem. You guys have the strategies to be able to solve these. I know you do. I know you can do it. Okay. Plus you've watched all these boring videos with me, so they might as well be put to some sort of good use, right? You know how to do this stuff. So take your time with it. Plot it out. Think about it. And don't make silly mistakes like I did, okay? So if you're having any other questions, having any other concerns with this, please reach out. Let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. We can jump in online and work together. We can meet up at school, whatever we need to do. Let your learning guide know as well. I'm sure they would be more than happy to work with you um, if you're struggling or anything like that. But again, like always, guys, I thank you for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks. Bye. Thank you